Hey, I'm in the heat. What's up, buddy? What's up, my coach? Congratulations. Did you get my text message? Yes. You did, yeah. Yes, I did. Great. Yeah. So, did he, Ryan offer you the job or did he ask you to. No? I, no, I'm just joking. I'm going to say, <laughs> I haven't talked about coaching, I talk about playing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you want to come back still, don't you? Many years ago. Many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm only defenseman. Now you're team. defenseman? Yeah, defenseman. We wow. Have, we have, um, Saturday we have a game. Yeah. Oh, yeah? I used to be offensive defenseman. Now I'm home stay defenseman. Stay at home? Now. If stay I beg, I better stay home. Yeah. <laughs> well, time to appear. Okay, bro. Awesome. Cheers. Good to see yeah, you. Nice guys. to see you in yeah. the chicken. Yeah. Good to be, yeah. Yeah. Good great to be here in Prague. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's great. And good luck to you guys. Tom and Ryan, how much time have you two actually spent together? This is going to be the most. <laughs> yeah. We met a few times. However, yeah. this is the first time we had time to sit together and, and, and talk. And Gentlemen you see heading for the podium now are from the Buffalo Sabres Stanley Cup finalists. There's their general manager, Darcy Regeer, their coach, Lindy Ruff, director of amateur scouting, Jim Benning, and player personnel director, Don Luce. This is an organization that many feel have the best young prospects in all of the National Hockey League. I got drafted uh, and then a year and a half later you know, Don was gone and so it, we never really crossed over. We stood across from each other a lot on the ice. Yeah, on the ice. Have you been in training camp my last two years or in Buffalo? Uh, so, no, no I, I went to college and I think that generation when you got drafted and college thing they didn't do as many development camps or didn't have you come to camp unless they thought you're an option and I was going back to, to college for those years so what was it like coaching this guy well you didn't have to coach he just went out and played I think you know the uh, I, I still the memory of, you know when we played in Philadelphia and the one, the puck was shot through the side of the net? Yeah. And you kept looking back at the net like there's something wrong that should have never went in. <laughs> yeah. And there was no replay or anything back then. And, and you just kept going, you know, like checking on, this shouldn't have went in. We are back here in Philadelphia, just prior to the start of game number two. Gagne is starting right back again. Gagne drops it back. McGillis and a shot scores. Leclair on the short side with a bullet. And on the power play, Philadelphia has tied the game. Uh, just a one-time shot. Dominic Hasek should have made the save on that. Uh, he had plenty of time to react. And the shot beat him over the left glove on the short side. That was a shot that Hasek should have stopped. I remember seeing Hasek looking down to think how did that puck go in the net the puck was dropped and the next face off and he's replaying the play like i'm here how how did that go in espn was doing hockey back then and so like 20 minutes later we get a maybe five ten minutes later yeah we get comes on the bench that the puck went through the side of the net and all of a sudden porky palmer one of our locker room attendant comes running down the hallway marty 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 that, that shouldn't have counted, that shouldn't have counted. The puck went through the side of the net. So I walk down to the locker room and Hollywood rewinds it and he's like, look, look. So I run back to the bench and I tell Lindy and you know, Lindy's talking to Don Lever and now all of a sudden calls the referee over and he goes, Marty, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I just saw it from the, the, the goal angle. And it literally, clearly went through the side of the net. And they go check and there's a, there's a hole, there's in, a the hole yeah. in the side of the net. And Dom knew that there was no way it should have went in. Now there's a hole in the Buffalo net they just off the left goal post. Oh boy. Oh that boy. Is, that's let's, pretty close. Let's see that again. As we look at the replay, the puck deflected. I thought initially it went over Dominic's Hasek's glove. Oh, that, folks, that puck went through the side of the net. It was a little hole, you know, you couldn't yes. even see it. When, when Guy it, shot from the right side? Yes. 
and it went short side on you. Now the Darcy Regeer right now is upstairs in the uh, the replay officials booth and he's very as you can see adamant. It wasn't until the end of that period where peak on the press box in Philadelphia and that's when Darcy Regeer made his way to the video judge you know the NHL and it was it was heated up up there and we could see it from the bench. You can see he's upset and I don't blame him. Dom was upset about it. In the intermission, everybody's like, the heck, that shouldn't have counted. And it was a big moment in the series. Philadelphia with a phantom goal goes on to beat the Buffalo Sabres two to one. It's like when you remember the one time you came in the office, like, and you ranted about the goal. That goal did not go in the net. You came flying in the office. I don't know what you guys were looking at, but that goal never went in. Do you remember that? And we said, Ryan, calm down. It, it definitely went in. Um, and we showed you of the video clip that you hadn't seen, like an angle you hadn't seen, and you went, oh, I guess it did go in. <laughs> well, that's just the attitude you have to have. I Nothing know. Nothing can go in. I know. There's no way that went in. Ugh. Came with the heater. There we go! Lindy Ruff practice is fast. Get up! Get him! It's competitive. Cut him! Cut him! Oh, good pickup. That's a good pickup. And it's with purpose. And I think that's probably the best words I can describe. Dolph! Stay underneath! Stay underneath! Our weak side guy we want deeper. Good job, Tomer! Oh, I like it! You got him, Greeny! You got him! I think he has found a way to first get us to play faster. That was probably his biggest thing coming into the year. Let's go! Drive, 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 drive! There we go! Jump him! Squeeze! You know, as a staff, and, and certainly headed by Lindy, we're trying to shape the identity of this team into being a team that, that is blue-collar at heart. Get up on him, Dolph! Yeah! Dialed in. That's exactly what we want. Yeah! driven by our work ethic, our competitiveness, our team toughness. We want to be a fast, physical, aggressive uh, brand of hockey. And those are the conversations that we had from day one back in May. Seth, any, anything in terms of the guys you've coached, you know, that now you're here, they're here, like do you, you think will respond well to how we want to, you know, Lindy's talking about how we're going to play. I mean, does anyone jump out at you like that? Lindy and I have talked a lot about uh, very similar philosophies. North, fast, direct, playing behind teams, using our speed to put teams into foot races. The guy that comes to mind that I think thrived in it in Raj and is going to thrive for Lindy is, is Paterka. That predictability of where the puck's going just allows his explosive skating uh, to be even more dynamic. Our circle shot scores, J.J. Paterka. I think it fits the personnel of our team, and it certainly fits our city, and it fits Lindy's personality. Good job! I've enjoyed playing for Lindy a lot. He, he's been a great coach. It's been great seeing how he's kind of brought his ideas and philosophies into this season. Awesome, awesome practice. Awesome energy. Practice like today gets us ready for day one. So great job. Probably the first camp ever we put the team together right away from day one. Didn't split up players, didn't uh, just put the team together, practice for a couple days. I remember we were once in Europe. You remember, yeah. we played yeah. against Tampa and somewhere in Austria. Yeah, we played. But in, the difference was that time, it was like Klagenfurt. right at the beginning played of the time. Klagenfurt. okay. Yeah. You know better than me. <laughs> uh, uh. NHL players are no strangers to airports. But this trip promised to be different for the Buffalo Sabres. First off, they don't often travel with their families. And second, they're more likely to go to Carolina, not Klagenfurt. But this time, the destination was Austria, as the Sabres took part in the 1998 International Challenge. Well, the NHL approached us and, and uh, wanted a team uh, over here and promote the game. And uh, I think we were an obvious choice with Dominic Hasek being the Olympian that he is and gold medalist. I remember we played like we were first time on the ice, some players, you know, and then we played the next day, we played the first game. Yeah. Seriously, we didn't, we started training camp here, or we started it in, no, we started it here. You know, we, we started were, it here, I, I we believe. We started yeah. here. So me, I was like, 
I was literally, I was like third or fourth time on the ice, you know. Yeah. Uh, like one time I, I put it in my hand and we, had, and we played the next day, we played a game. It, anyway, we, we won like five nothing and then, then we played Tampa exhibition game, so it was, doesn't really matter how it ends. Remember when we went to lead? Air, at the airport? Do you I remember? remember. Yeah, remember. you do remember. I still have we had a little stuff. delay, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. Uh, you know what happened? I know. Because, it, <laughs> no, 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 because of my car. Your speeding was, ticket, uh, right? Or yeah, what? Yeah. No, I didn't have, when I was driving through the, uh, Germany, yeah. I didn't have my license plate on. I, I was stupid, actually. I, I, I mean, no, no, I was stupid. So they took me, they stopped me there, and I had to pay the fine. And I said, I didn't pay it. And when we went to Germany, like, you know, they, on the airport, they said, like, oh, you didn't pay the fine. <laughs> so I had to pay like 10,000, whatever. They, they took Dom away. We had to wait like two, three hours. Yeah. And we're going, what did Dom do? Anyway, I still had this car, and it's a beautiful car. So, but I still remember that story. Yeah. We traded places one day, remember? I put the goal, you put your stuff on. Do you remember you wanted to take shots on me? Really? I, I came know. out, I had your mask, I had your full really? crew. You said, you try, I shoot on you, you really? told me. Really? And I played, yeah. you couldn't beat me. That was a good goalie. Or you were a bad forward, one of the two. <laughs> I didn't know that was an option. I should have asked. You could have took me up on it. <laughs> Lindy always strapped on the goalie gears, probably a couple times a year. So I was on a three or four game winning streak and we get to a morning skate and it's an optional skate and Lindy decides he's gonna put the gear and we're gonna play three on three cross ice. And he comes on the ice and I look over and he's got one of my sticks that he grabbed off the sick rack. He's got my game stick. Like seriously, what do you say? Like, hey coach, go get another stick. This is my lucky stick. This is my game stick. And sure enough, he practiced the whole practice with the stick. And then my next game, I lost. If Lindy showed up on the ice in goalie gear, it would be pretty funny. I think we, I think we'd all get a kick out of that. Um, I, I don't know if his knees would hold up, you know, like they did 20 years ago or whatever that was. I think there's definitely a, a lighter side of it when coaches do it, and it's a lot of fun. So if the 98-99 team played the 506 team, what would happen? What was more talented team? Lindy, you know, you know. You, oh, well, 506 was more talented. We have four lines that could score. We were deeper. Probably get, we'd probably get beat up though. Probably get beat up, yeah. The skill level, like we we scored a lot of goals that year. It's important to say the league was changing, the rules were changing. Yeah, that's right. So it was completely different rules. Also, I thought like you and Darcy got ahead of things really well coming out of the lockout. Yeah. I think Sabres as an organization, you guys were ahead, like you knew you had to develop our group during that downtime and then play differently. And so we kind of practiced it. Yeah. Right, like leading up to it. Yeah. So we kind of had guys who were going to play a different game right after the lockout ended. It's been an exciting start for Buffalo, and they have a very exciting hockey team. Well, I think we got a lot of guys that can skate. Um, you know, a lot of guys uh, with with really good speed. You know, above average speed. And I think you put those together with the new rules, uh, you know, are helping us right now. Chris touched upon the fact that the new rules, of course, which have led to so many penalties, and Buffalo has certainly been very active in that department at cutting them down. Remember one of those first preseason games we uh, we because of the new rules, like the referees were actually they came over and explained how tough the rules were going to be. So. We practice like no hooking, don't put your stick on, no free hand. Uh, and I think the first game we had like 12 power plays and the other team had four. Sabres had that two-man advantage. It was because one of those new rules again, Razor, because they had delay of game, shooting the puck yeah. over the glass in your own zone. Can't do it this year. It's very difficult to be a player this day and age because you've got to remember all the new rules all the time. But, you know, they fired the puck over the glass. When it goes over the glass in the neutral zone, it's going to be a penalty. If it lands in the bench, it's not a penalty. So the best thing is shoot it straight at the bench and maybe take out one of the players while you're doing it. No. <laughs> That might be a... the opposing team. Okay, very good. Yeah, 2005 or six, I don't remember yeah. exactly. Yeah. You had a great team. You had team. Yeah. You, yeah, we were good. But it's alright. You could, you should, or whatever. It's the right word to say. But definitely should. Uh, you had you had like three defensemen on the end of the day. Yeah. You had each We got down to two. Yeah, got two. down to two on that one. Lindy Ruff, the coach of the Sabres, says we will get our chances to win this game, and so will they. I have the utmost belief we can do it again. Of his two starting defensemen, Brian Campbell and Tony Ludman, he said, they'll probably both play over 30 minutes tonight.
We were down to Brian Campbell and Tony Ludman. Those were our two guys left. Yes. And you still, you, you still were very close, and you were up to one that yeah. day. I was watching on TV, and yeah. somebody uh, pa pa put it. Brian Campbell. Brian Campbell, yeah, yeah, yeah. A delay of game. Campbell reaches in behind the net. He wants to fire the puck up. He's pressured, but it goes directly into the stands. Do I think that that's the defining moment in the game? No, but do I think it's a, a big play? Yeah. One of the greatest seasons, you know, of my career, but it was also the biggest regrets. So I think everybody in that locker room, I think, yeah, we wanted to win a Stanley Cup for each other, but we wanted to win a Stanley Cup for Buffalo, and I think that's what we regret about it the most. Well, obviously, with Brian Campbell, there was the penalty in Game 7 against Carolina, but I hope that what fans remember is that first round of the playoffs, the hit on R.J. Umberger, that set the tone. That set the tone for that playoff series and the energy and all the fun that the fans had that year in the playoffs. One of the best hits of all time. Do you remember his hit? Yeah. Surprised Umberger. Umberger, Umberger on the breakout, one of the biggest hits of all time. One of my favorite hits really? of all time for a guy you wouldn't think. You wouldn't think and Umberger's a pretty big guy. Soupy's hit on R.J. Umberger was one of the biggest hits I've ever seen. I see it clear as day because I was about 10 feet away from it on the ice with him. When you stand back there and a big smile comes on your face, I still remember that hit. Incredible. Head down big time and Brian Campbell ran over him like a Greyhound bus. All I remember after the hit, I just remember knowing that Soupy's not a big guy, and, but I'm probably gonna have to fight someone for this hit. I was never known as a hitter, but to have a hit like that, it just that just doesn't leave you, and the reaction and the people, and still being talked about, you know, today with my name. So that happened in a playoff game in overtime was something I was like, whoa, and that's just not my forte when playing hockey. It just kind of came together and happened. Dom, you had some big hits too. You know when the guy come in the hand to head yes, down, yes, and, yes, and yes, all yes. of a sudden you were like at the top of the circle, and the guy's going, "Woo!" Coming up the center ice, the ball is shot from out of the net. The check for coming out of the penalty box. You know what? <laughs> I've done it in Czech. You the did the, in the Czech old too? guy one time. He, on the old guy? It wasn't you. No, the guy, the goalie. A goal he used to play, he told me like sometimes try to do it. I was like 10, 15 years old, like. And the guy who was playing, he was the top goalie in the, on the team, and he played on the national team. Not like starting goalie, but he was good. And at the age of like 14 or 12, I know, he said, you know, sometimes try to do it. You know, they're watching the puck, go there. Okay, that's right. So I start to do it, and I had a few great hits. I mean, hits, you know, it's hits like you cut him. But, but it, it was legal. At that time, it was legal. It was, it was normal. It was normal. Nobody complained like if it happened. <laughs> is sent flying by the Dominator. Evil Knievel. Look at LaPointe, he's not even watching. He said, what's he doing there? <laughs> Hasek coming out! Oh! Gabrick oh. right over top of Dom! What? What? But Dominic Hasek came out. What? Of course, the best one is Garbori. I mean, <laughs> not, nothing happened to me, yeah. nothing happened to him. I know he's dangerous a little bit. Lindy coming in, he, he talked about playing hard. I don't always think it means laying the biggest hit out there. I don't think it's always fighting, but it's it's doing the non-negotiables, as he likes to call it. Everyone is stepping up. Everybody's working hard. Everyone is doing that back check or blocking that shot or whatever. Lindy's doing a great job by talking a lot about non-negotiables, and uh, those are the things. So. Hit down low and he delivered. You know, I think we, we had a good preseason. We suffered a couple tough losses. I think when you deal with losses like that, the adversity can make you stronger, and I think it, it's making us stronger. I think one indication is number of block shots to try to help uh, win a game tonight. I remember Malenstein's laying out to block a shot. Pass across, oh. shot, a commitment to block that time by Malenstein. Some of our tracking back and getting people back and disrupting, you know, a, a really good offensive team. Fans recognize that effort by Byram as he got back on Lundell. I think everybody's 
been dialed in and, and receptive and wanting to learn. And I think that's the biggest asset you know that, that we can have as a team is wanting to learn from our coach. You got a kill and go here, Blue. Hey, come on. Grabs it, let's go. Fire up. Two on the yeah. side of Krebs works in with the battle set. Yeah. He's done a pretty good job of that and as far as teaching the young guys what he states are non-negotiables and, and things of that sort. So I think it's been a great change and I think guys are uh, are very excited about it. I got Krebs Benson, laugh. Krebs Benson, laugh. Come on, buddy, come on. Do this is shift here, come on. Lindy on the bench is intense, but he's calm and he's calculated. And that's a craft that takes a lot of honing as a head coach. But there's an intensity to him because he has a competitive fire that burns very deep inside. I'm gonna put some heat on him now. Put some heat on him now. Come on, gotta come up with those puck battles. Get it in there again, get it in there again. Throw it in there, come on. You play the game the right way and when it's your turn to block a shot, when it's your turn to, to forecheck, back check, that's the stuff that he really harps on and I think that's that, those are his keys to what's gonna lead us to our success. Get those going to the net. Get those going to the net, get somebody around the paint. Keep them going to the net. Fight for that net front. Fight for net front. Score! the shot. I think that was deflected down low. Great shot by Bo. Uh, he put it into a situation that, whether it went in or not, we were going to incite chaos on our opponents. It was either going to go in the net or you had a puck ricocheting around on the back post with bodies around there. Sabres four, Red Wings three. Raymond in front for Kane. Oh, what a block there to dive and take away the passing lane. Far circle shot at Watt. D net chance. Let's go. Block shots, 27 block shots. That's how many we want to win. 27 block shots on the night. We keep playing like that. We keep playing like that. We're going to win every night. Some unbelievable saves for this. Oh! Come on, PG. Come on. Come on. Big goal for us right here. Come on. Cousins wins it back. Darlene wasting no time. Scores a rocket from the captain. And the game. It looks like this beautiful slap shot by Darlene, and it is, but it likely doesn't go in if Alex Tuck is flash screening at the, at the hash marks, and Jason Zucker is right on top of the goalie taking his eyes away. He has a big focus on, you know, setting a high standard for ourselves. We've discussed what, what is necessary to win hockey games, but there's a standard you have to play to, and, and the standard hasn't been it hasn't been good enough. I think it's brought a, uh, a different mentality to guys with um, a little bit more accountability. What's the key to, to getting that full 60 minute? Not accepting effort? that's good enough. Not accepting that we've done a lot of good things. We got to win games. And that's the key. We raise the standard, raise, raise the expectation. Okay, hockey is, is not good enough. You know, it's easy for a, a team, organization, whatever the case is, to, you know, just continue to be, you know, okay or whatever the case is. But he's always pushing guys to raise their standard, you know, motivate them, which, you know, I think is really big for us. What's the drill? Oh, my, let's go. Come here. Earn it, eh? We gotta earn it. Last drill, I think. Battle. Your only job is to get him out of that circle. Okay, don't worry about the puck. <laughs> nice job. You know, having all the talent that's on this team, it, it's a tough task to come in and, and change an entire, you know, culture of sorts, and that's what he's, you know, set out to do. Can I ask all this? Good day. Earn this. Work like that in games, no one's gonna know. Watch this. Yeah, I can practice. Yeah. The standings up there in the locker room, how much you're trying to just drill home the, the chase starts now. We drilled home the chase starts game one. You need to have that awareness. I don't, I mean, some people say they don't like to look at the standings. Well, we're playing games where you gotta look at, for me, you gotta know where you're at if you wanna know where you wanna get to. You like that Lindy put it up there? I mean, you know, he said, some people say, oh, don't look at the standings, but he says he wants you guys to, to know what you're chasing. I, I actually love it. I, I like seeing where you're at and how much more valuable these points are and how much more desperate we have to play. Last Monday, we had a chance to talk with the new head coach of the Buffalo Sabres. What characteristics are really going to define a Lindy Ruff hockey team? I want a team to have a lot of life and a lot of energy, a, 
I, I want them to, to seem like they really are having fun out there. He loves the physical style. He loves it when guys are intense into the game and, you know, it kind of carries off of us onto him and, and, and it's, uh, you know, more of an alighting thing on the bench because uh, it keeps guys into it and, and he enjoys our style, which we found that we can be successful with. He's dedicated to hockey. He's loyal. Um, and I guess if uh, you look at Lindy, he's all the things that you'd want a player to be. And I think uh, that's as a coach, I think uh, that'll rub off on his players. So you've been there since the beginning until... Yeah, no, like how, how many, how many, you know, I mean, you, you broke the record. I mean, but I don't know if you broke the record, but at that time you were the old, I don't know if the oldest is the right, longest, 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 coach, tenure. Yeah. longest coach in the NH for one team. Yeah. You know why they worked out that way? Because I had you and I had you. That makes you a good coach. I didn't, I didn't want to say it, but I know you're going to say it. <laughs> I want to hear it from you, yeah. of course. No, it's true. Compliments. True. Yeah, no, it is true. It's true. I mean, it starts there with great goaltending. And you, guys, uh, you guys made me a hell of a coach. I think Lindy Ruff as a coach was exceptional. Lindy wanted you to work hard. That, that was the number one thing. You work hard, you compete, and let uh, everything else fall into place where it does. Obviously, he was very structured came up with very good game plans. When you're around someone with the, not only the number of games that Lindy has in the National Hockey League, and not just as a coach, fifth winningest coach of all time, but, but also as a player and an assistant coach. For me, I feel like I'm just soaking up daily knowledge from one of the best that's ever done it in our business. Get some pucks going to the net off the tough angle. Come out of the corners, get some pucks going to it. Come on. The Buffalo Sabres open their California swing tonight in Los Angeles. It's a shot, scores! Dolls did a great job getting in. Nozuka did a great job of being in front. We're laying out, Mal, you know, blocking shots. That shot is blocked. Yeah, Loopy was incredible. Oh, what a save know. by Lucan! Because he, I think, had four at the end there, and it was a full team effort tonight. It was nice to see. What gives me confidence that they are going to come through and have a successful season is the talent. The talent is there. Is a delicious finish by the captain. Getting to the front of the net, blocking shots, winning puck battles, managing the puck. Those are all parts of having a winning team and a successful team. But if you don't pay attention to the other things, talent is not going to get it done alone. Cousins oh. scores! Dylan Cousins in the high slot has tied the game. Gotta give a little shout out to the boys that were standing in front of the net too, screening the goalie because we went hammer time in that one, so yeah. it's nice to see. From special teams to our five and five play, and you just got to keep getting better and use it as momentum. Shot scores! Yuri Kulik with the overtime winner. Just like how black and white he is with everything, what he expects from us. He just demands that you work hard, and I think he just holds you to another level. What does that mean to you, Lindy, when you have a coach uh, talking that way instead of uh, maybe getting down but saying, hey, I'm going to hang in here with these guys? Well, I think it, it makes you feel good, you know. It, it gives you a second chance and a third chance, and, and, and you want to prove him right. You know, he's given us all he's got, and, and we haven't given him that much in return, and, and hopefully this is a step to the ladder on the way up. We have a window from the start of camp till maybe mid-November to have our team locked in to, to playing the game the right way, to creating that culture that when a team leaves our building, they're going to say, man, were those guys tough to play against. And when you start hearing those type of comments, you know you've got your team in the right place. Good luck, guys. Awesome. Thank yeah, thank you. Yeah, great seeing you guys. And great memories. Gross.